तहे दिल से अभिनंदन है आज हम सब नेशनल ग्रुप मीट में यहाँ उपस्थित हैं विश्वविद्यालय की परंपरा के अनुसार हम अपने इस कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत करेंगे आज यह कार्यक्रम बिरसा कृषि विश्वविद्यालय एवं आई के सौजन्य से यहाँ पर आयोजित है मैं आग्रह करूँगी आई सी सॉन्ग को यहाँ पर प्ले करने के लिए तत्पश्चात कुल गीत के बाद आज का यह कार्यक्रम विधिवत प्रारंभ होगा आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट टू प्ले द आई सी सॉन्ग प्लीज and after that the cool gita of the bersai lekha university will be played and then we will be heading towards the inaugural session of the national group meet today for which we have gathered the honorary guest on the stage we have today is ddg icar dr tr sarma vice chancellor honorable bersai lekha university dr sc dubey agriculture commissioner government of india dr pk singh adg ffc dr s k prakash dr ffc dr commissioner government of india dr pk singh adg ffc dr s k pradhan and director icar ig fri chhasi dr pankaj kaushal we have the project coordinator aicrp on forage as well as director research of bersai agriculture university so now we are heading towards the inaugural session with the icar song jay jay krishi parishad bharat ki sukhad pratik harit bharat ki krishi dhan pashu dhan ma
प्रांगण में आज ये नेशनल ग्रुप मीट आयोजित है किसी भी नेक कार्य की शुरुआत हम ईश्वर की आराधना के साथ करते हैं और उसका प्रतीक है दीप प्रज्वलन मैं माननीय अतिथिगण जो मंचासीन मंच पर मौजूद हैं उनसे सादर निवेदन करना चाहूँगी कि आज के इस अवसर पर दीप प्रज्वलित कर आज के इस कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत करें हमारे वे संगतियाँ हैं उन्हें दूर करने में हम सब सहायक होंगे दीप प्रज्वलन की जल्दी हुई लौ के प्रकाश में हम सब अपने ज्ञान से आने वाले वक्त में समाज को कुछ बेहतरीन और कुछ नया देकर जाएंगे उम्मीद करते हैं कि जिस उद्देश्य के साथ इस कार्यशाला का आयोजन नेशनल ग्रुप मीट का यहाँ पर हुआ है उस ग्रुप मीट के माध्यम से हम सभी अपनी संपूर्ण ऊर्जा को संचारित करके समाज को एक नई रोशनी नया उजाला नया प्रकाश प्रदान करने की कोशिश करेंगे इन्हीं भावनाओं के साथ शुभ उद्देश्य के साथ शुभ कामनाओं का संदेश प्रेषित करते हुए दीप प्रचलन करते हमारे माननीय मंचासीन अतिथिगण द डिग्निटीज ऑफ द टायर्स आर लाइटिंग द लैम्प and wish the success to this national group meet for which we have gathered here the thought behind is only to enlighten the society to enlighten the state and the nation through our work and through our energy that is the aspiration that we have been shor udhakar unhe sammanit bhi kare aur smriti chinh pradan kare ummeed hai yah prem sneh ki bhet यह सम्मान जो हमारे हृदय के भाव हैं उसे हम आपके समक्ष प्रकट कर पाए यह स्मृति चिन्ह जो आपको बिरसा कृषि विश्वविद्यालय की और स्नेशनल ग्रुप में भी याद दिलाता रहेगा यह सब प्रेम है मैं माननीय कुलपति से पुनः आग्रह करूंगी कि एग्रीकल्चर कमीशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया से हमारे बीच उपस्थित डॉक्टर स्थिति से हम सब एहलारित अपने हृदय के भाव प्रकट कर दें पुनः आग्रह है मैं उन्होंने समय हमें दिया है हम सब अनुग्रहित हैं इस भाव से मैं पुनः परंपरा और रीति रिवाज से उसी का निर्वहन कर रहे हैं और आपके आतिथ्य से हम सब पहला दिन भाव विभोर अपने हृदय के भावों को इस तरीके से प्रकट कर रहे हैं माननीय गुरुपति गुस्सा कुछ विश्वविद्यालय डॉक्टर एस सी दुबे साहब को पुष्प पुष्प प्रदान कर उनका अभिनंदन करें और शौर्य उठा कर उन्हें सम्मानित करें मैं उनसे पुनः आग्रह करूंगी कि आज के इस अवसर पर स्मृति चिन्ह प्रदान करें मैं उनसे आग्रह करूंगी कि इस I am delighted to welcome you all at the annual group meeting of the All India Coordinated Research Project on Forest Crop and Utilization. The August gathering is here to review the forest research program and achievement for 2023-2024 and technical program for 2024-25. I heartily welcome Dr. T R Sharma sir, Deputy Director General, who agreed to our request for hosting this national meet here in spite of his busy schedule. As all of us know that parliament session is going on, sir, president is there as must be. Dr. Sharma ji also discharged the additional responsibility for DDG Horticulture and Director Iyer, Iyer New Delhi. Also welcome our honourable vice chancellor, Dr. S. Dubey sir, to this event. Till six months ago, Dr. Dubey sir had was DDG at the ICI headquarters, and he is known for his pioneering work on plant disease management and biosafety. Our research program is getting new speed and direction under. His program and guidance. Here, Assistant Director General Dr. S. S. K. Pradhan Ji here was he has got significant contribution in the field of rice breeding and has developed over 30 rice varieties of various state of various state of our country. With rice being a principal crop of this, we need your continuous guidance and support, sir. It is proud moment to extend warm welcome to Dr. P. K. Singh, Agriculture Commissioner, Government of India, Dr. Pankaj Kausal, Director Indian Grassland and Water Research, Jhansi. And Dr. G. P. Singh, Director, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Research, New Delhi. Dr. Sanjay Kumar, Director, Indian Institute of Seed Research, MAU. And Dr. B. K. Yadav, Project Coordinator of Ethereum Pond Forest Crop and Utilization. Without both active support, we are not much ahead with this research. I am happy to inform that Ethereum Pond Forest Crop is one of the oldest Ethereum under the operation of the Prisa Research University. Ranchi Center of the Forest Research was started in remain to be here. I am delighted to inform you that our scientist, particularly Dr. Yogendra Kumar and Dr. Virendra, have done very good job for Ranchi Center. One entry, Dina Nath Glass is in the pipeline. Two entry of the Lathras is a best performing entry in AB2 and AB2 trial. Both entries are also testing in the ABT and AB2 trial. So we are working hard to improve the forage research at the BAU. Going to life of exploration facility in the Plateau region, animal husbandry is an important source of livelihood from down the year and rural population of the Jharkhand. However, per capita availability of milk in Jharkhand is very low, that is 177 grams per day in comparison to national average, 390 
four gram per day. There is a wide gap in fodder requirement and supply in the Jharkhand. With respected faculty members, distinguished participants of this national group meet, I welcome to all of you. I am going to make a brief presentation of the salient achievement we have made during the last five years and brief action taken report on the recommendations. This AICRP forage crop was started in 1972 and we are running with the 22 coordinating center located at 21 states in 5 agroclimatic situations of the country. We are executing with the 27 uh, voluntary center, 65 forage gardens, the concept which is given by your Honorable uh, Deputy Director General Dr. T.R.C. Very, uh, you can see any two years where we have got very huge support from the council and we have made, we assured that the, all the funds should be utilized properly. And last five years, around 100% party of the fund has been allocated to this program has been utilized by our group. These are the, our achievements during the last five years. We have uh, about uh, 191 uh, trials have been conducted in reading and about 340 locations uh, per year, about 66, 67 locations and increased testage around 1,146 and there are people who would like to listen to them. May I request Director ICAR, IGFRI from Jhansi, Dr. Pankaj Kaushal to please come forward with his views. So please. आप सबको IGFRI, AICRP की तरफ से बहुत बहुत नमस्कार आप लोग मुझे यहाँ पधारने पर फोरेज क्रॉप्स की जो फिजा थी वो और बेहतर हो गई है As rightly said by our project coordinator IGFRI and the AICRP system on forage crops they go hand in hand in answering many questions which are in fact very difficult when we talk about forage crop scenario. Be it breeding, be it production, be it protection, handling forage crops have always been very, very difficult. Handling forage crops is a bit difficult than handling our cereals, our pulses, our cash crops, plantation crops and other crops. Taken in total, we used to breed about 34 crops in as forage crops. That too contains lot of legumes, that too contains lot of grasses, that too contains annuals, that too contains perennials, that too contains cultivated, that too contains rangeland species. So diversity of the crops, the species make our overall forest scenario a difficult system to breed. Even then, the system of AICRP forage crops being operated in about 50 centers is doing really great job. But the time we need to remodify, review and refresh our approach towards fodder crop development. We are running short of about 11% green matter, 24% dry matter, and about 50% of forage seeds. But definitely, this deficit demand and supply has to be reduced by using many more avenues and using cutting edge technologies. So, accept the fact that the area under forage crops is not going to increase. We need to improve the productivity, find newer niches whereby these fodder crops can be grown. And the huge data that we have generated in last years in various systems including AICRP system that need to be properly organized, managed using AI technologies so as to identify the suitable donors of these specific traits. I have always been advocating about the grasses, that grasses are the biggest reservoir of desirable genes in this globe because they grow at those places where other crops refuse to grow. So, by going back to the data over 50 or 60 years that the AICRP system has generated on forage crops and grasses, that needs to be properly analyzed by which has and has given space and time to come across and exchange the ideas. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Jai. The FFCI from S. 
ICAR Dr. S.K. Pradhan Sahab, sir, please. Faculty members, participants from various centers of the country, volunteer, dear organizing committee and students. A hearty welcome to you to, the, to this important occasion that is annual group meeting wherein there is a combined works of this time, Kharif and Rabi. So both uh, this is a combined one and uh, you know this is very important uh, area of research, fodder crops and uh, fodder is very important for our country and you know this uh, livestock component particularly milk and milk this livestock uh, GDP is contributing about 5%. So about that, if we will be thinking the fodder forage component, it's most of this rearing cost is this forage crops here, yeah, fodder. So that is about, it is, uh, it is about 60 to 70% fodder cost, rearing cost contributes. So if it can, we can minimize, then definitely the, the farmers will be benefited, will be profit will be better. So and bursting, we have released varieties, but I hope there is less seed produced in the country. So almost all the seeds are being imported from foreign countries. That is about 90%. So we have to think for that. Being the leguminous fodder, very important fodder crops, we have to look back to our breeding strategy. How better for these forage crops we can develop? Also, if you will be seeing the short form, is you know, it's about uh, green fodder and dry fodder. Particularly green fodder, the deficit is reduced. If you see the last few years, two years back. The gap was about, shortfall was about 35-36%. And if the current situation will be seen, it's almost 10-12%. Uh, to 12%. It's very, very happy review. The progress is very happy. Also, seed indent, seed progress, and these things are good way of uh, this thing. We are able to manage the product requirement. So, therefore, necessary steps should be very, very uh, wise decision to be taken to increase this fodder production in the country and to utilize this important area, importance allocated for fodder, you know, is almost, uh, almost 5% of the our cultivated area is devoted. That is about 8 to 9 million hectare. That is remaining static. We are unable to increase the area. So rather we have to think for increasing the productivity or yeah, production and quality, of course, quality for our crops. We have to do nutritional factor, yeah, nutritional content, those basic study, where they are located, how to use in the breeding program. This should be thoroughly done. This is a wonderful system collaboration. Here the uh, headquarters is institute and the, so many collaborating centers. Enough potentiality exists for, for this type of study like the basic study where the phenotyping can be done in the centers and in the headquarters we can genotype and we can reveal the location. GWAS already we, we discussed and already they have started GWAS. So very good thing and again you should think for more trades and use simultaneously many things together so that in a short term, not long period, within a short period we will be able to improve the crop forage variety with many trades. Jharkhand prospective because uh, you all are going, this is a very unique state. Unique state in the sense that uh, we have the maximum rainfall more about 30, 1400 millimeter annually, but even the majority of the area is rain -fit. And only 12% of geographical area under the cultivation. So if the less area is cultivation and the air, the fodder cultivation is very minimal. We have about 70% shortage of the green fodder as against the shortage of the green fodder at the national level 34-35% and dry fodder at 11-12%. Uh, and uh, what to talk about the concentrate, uh, 
very limited availability of concentrates for the animals are available over here. There is limited the lake globally or even the uh, uh, national level in our country about the 44-45 percent shortage of the concentrates are there. So in such situation where the green availability of green fodder is minimum, availability of the concentrate is minimum, area under the fodder cultivation is minimum and majority of the area is rain fed, acidic, non suitable for cultivation and if it is there only the unused land, undulated land are being used for the fodder cultivation. So how we can ex extend this fodder cultivation? in the region. That is a very difficult task, even a herbudian task. And majority of animals, those who are kept at the farmer's household level, they have the grazing uh, habits. Normally in the morning, they, they used to go into the field and evening they are coming back. So the protection with the wild animal is another, another problem in this area. Even then under such situations, how we can improve the not only the first time, in the Jharkhand I am thinking only the acres, how we can improve the area expansion, then we, we can thought about the quality and all this. And this is a very, very um, um, pathetic situation over there. Because if you see the, this, this fodder availability directly reflecting in the uh, annual production of the milk and average production of milk in the state also. Uh, we have only one point to, uh, near 117 gram availability of milk per day as per the about uh, 400 gram uh, per day in the national environment. So very very deficient uh, is there. Uh, so many things, almost all the things we are very very uh, negligible. Even even uh, we four percent of the population share of the Jharkhand in the area. Even then share in the production is very negligible. This is the situation is very. Uh, not good. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to congratulate the PC cell uh, for some of the remarkable achievement they have made. I, I, I have seen during the presentation uh, large number of gradually trial, number of trials is increasing, 191 trials within five years they have conducted. Uh, 83 varieties they have released, altogether 122 varieties, if I am right. 34 crop uh, as the director has directed 34 order crops included in, in this and uh, 21 technology they have released. So for that uh, they deserve appreciation and congratulations but still uh, a lot of things has to be done in the fodder. Definitely in the, the always the green fodder is the challenge. Dry fodder uh, we have the although availability is very less because this what the animal are every household people are having the animals all category of the farmers have one or two animals whether they are having the land or not land so those who are not having the land for them the dry fodder is the problem otherwise for those who are the having the land they don't have the maximum number of the animals nowadays they mechanize farming and they just like in the rice the paddy straw burning in the UP and uh, Rajasthan and in Madhya Pradesh, even the wheat straw they are not collecting for the fodder. So because the collecting them and processing them and the selling is involved more cost rather than the uh, purchasing the fodder. So this is another problem, how we can handle this economics of the uh, dry fodder, fodder for the collection and processing from after the harvesting of the crop, that is another, another problem. But in such situation, definitely the Green fodders play is very vital role. They, they can not only improve the health and all these things, but we can reduce a country like India, the farmers' situation, economic situation of farmers uh, can be improved while implementing or substituting the large amount of the green fodder. We can reduce the concentrate. Availability of concentrate is equally or uh, rather than more serious than the availability of the green fodder. By the grazing, some of the poor farmers can meet their animals for the green fodder, but the, for the concentrate, they don't have, even they don't have to eat uh, himself for, for what purpose they will give the. Only we remember at our, we have the land in cultivation, but even we are not providing maximum 500 gram concentrate to the, either with the cake or the oat or uh, other food grains. 
and as per the requirement, 200, 2, 2 kg to 2.5 kg per day, average requirement of the patient. So if you can supplement the green fodder, so availability of the green fodder can be uh, uh, can be increased uh, by doing the very uh, good ex uh, uh, scientific uh, ventures. There are the certain area where the personally, not as a scientist, as a person, as a farmer, I feel these are required to enhance the availability of the farmer. Avail first and foremost is the availability of the seed. Every year, even in our home, every year, they, from my nephew is calling, that uncle ji, kahan se barsim ka seed hai? And in the market, you go different kind of the barsim seed ranging from 1000 rupees to 2000 rupees kg, 3000 even sometimes. And most of them, germination quality is very poor. If the farmer uh, have to produce, the, they don't know the technology even after how many are cut, they have to keep their person to harvest the seed. Quality of the seed is very poor because in the maximum cutting they are doing in the March and April, there are the dry spell and the wind, all these things, uh, seed setting is very poor. So, per uh, uh, hectare area, the seed production is very low and quality of the seed is also very low. So, what kind of the seeds from where the farmers will get the seed at the, our honorable commissioner has told that we must have a plan, state-wise, district-wise, which kind of the fodder, fodder is required, where is required and from where the farmers will get the seed and what would be the policy of the seed production. They have to compromise the thousands of the rupees for that because direct, immediately they are not realizing the benefit of the green fodder. Maybe it is more remunerative rather than the growing the crop but they are not realizing. How we can convince them how this can be a small area in the diversification can be made to enhance the availability of the farmers. This uh, is one of the Dolikas projects and uh, BAU may also be involved in this project because uh, recently 13 different uh, local uh, lines has been deposited to NBPGR and uh, a very diverse, uh, very diverse group and 19 more they are characterizing uh, to deposit in NBPGR so that means 45, more than 45 Dolikas lines uh, they have collected from the different area of the Jharkhands they may also be explored and seen by involving the person those who have deposited over here uh, for this, uh, in the NBPGR. Uh, these are the few points uh, I would like. I hope this this pro this uh, program will be very useful. Uh, uh, when we are the students, borders considered to be very neglected area, and now it has gaining very important. Uh, in the entire ICR system, uh, uh, as, as its need and requirement, it is directly related to the uh, animal husbandry uh, dairy production. So I hope the deliberation will be fruitful and some of the recommendations will also will come out. And I request to the PC and director and all organizers to see what is specific technology intervention is required for the Jharkhand. So because the government of Jharkhand is also have the recommendation or our Kharif group meet from last two years recommending that uh, in this area needs to expansion of the fodder. So what what would be the ideal uh, species to be ex expanded uh, in the different geographical location uh, of the Jharkhands we are hoping we can get this. Thank you very much for providing me opportunity to speak some of my view to express over here. Thank you very much. उनके आशीर्वचन उनके उद्बोधन के लिए मंच पर मैं सादे रामनित्य करना चाहूँगी डीडीजी क्रॉप साइंस आईसीआर से डॉक्टर टीआर शर्मा साहब एंड दैट इंक्लूड्स वेरियस ट्रेड्स अराउंड 10 टू 14 ट्रेड्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम ईल्ड्स टू क्लाइमेट रेजिलिएंस ऑफ वैरायटीज इनकॉर्पोरेटिंग genes for high nutrient contents or biofortified varieties, resistant to drought, short duration, amenable to mechanical harvesting, the plants with more foliage and also in forest crops 
Stay green trade is one of the most important trades in all the crops because the green color attracts animal for its grazing. So, stay green trades can be one of the most important trades in all the crops, although it is there in maize in some of the varieties, also in also in sorghum. And while developing these product profile, you should have an online discussion with all the participants from AICRP as well as all the scientists of IGFRI Chansi so that you can get input from all the colleagues and involve your younger colleagues in more uh, discussions so that they can bring new knowledge and new input to the ongoing programs. Once we strengthen our crop improvement program at the institute and develop say improved breeding lines or advanced breeding lines that can be shared with the partners working across the centers. Similarly for crop production, it's very very important to standardize the fertilizer application and also even spacing while growing these crops under field condition. Agronomy is most important component now in most of the crops because if you see 30 to 35 percent yield gaps is all because of not using good agriculture practices across the crops. Whether we talk of forage crops or grain crops. So, the role of agronomist and soil scientist is very, very important and use the technologies which we have in our hand. Few years back I suggested that you can use drones for reseeding of our grazing lands with the seeds of grasses which are commonly grown in wilds. And we do have drones at our institute. Why don't you put some people on that job and standardize protocol for developing a, a method to spray seeds by making pellets by using drones. Although we don't consider plant protection uh, very seriously in fodder crops, but the fodder crops which are being cultivated at a larger scale in particularly basim, oats, maize, sorghum, all these crops are prone to very serious diseases. So it's only the duty of coalition that, that we don't have seed standards for many of the forage crops. And today I was happy to see that at least for nine crops we have developed seed standards. There the role of Indian shoot of seed science now is very important and I don't know how much collaboration you have with them. So IGFRI and Indian Institute of Seed Science should join hands together to develop these seed standards and make this field more, more attractive and scientific. I think there was a mention of developing uh, fodder plans for different districts of, uh, or different states. But uh, I, I know that for many of the states, we have fodder plans in place. And Dr. V. K. Yadav was officiating director and, and also coordinator Dr. Rai was there. They developed fodder plans for many states. It's only the matter of informing people sitting in policy making and also everybody here to tell them how far, how many states we have made fodder plans. So I will suggest that Dr. Yadav in all presentation, in, in coming years when we make presentation, one of the bullets you should tell that we have developed fodder plans for so many states. And with how many states you have shared those plans, 
and how many of those states are really executing those plans. So that's very important to inform everybody sitting in here in this particular hall. What we have done, we AICRP, I used to give a lot of suggestions on broadening genetic base which Dr. Dube has already talked and many breeders they know how to broaden the genetic base but in fodder species I would say that try to use apomixes for which uh, uh, Dr. Pankaj Kossel himself is an expert and but practical utility of apomixes in grasses we have to make use of that. It's very very common in most of the grasses and now by using your expertise of your young colleagues we have given a project on genome editing to IGFRI Chansey. So why don't you think of developing some programs on developing apomictic seeds or apomictic plants by using genome editing approach. And one of the most important uh, gene which we are editing across the crops was identified in our top seed is SNH3. SNH3 is a centromeric related histone protein, if you, if you knock out that particular protein or gene, it, it gives you different types of segregation of chromosome and you get applied chromosome. So, you have a very strong group of biotechnologists at IGFRI doing very good work, but if there is a need to now reorient their program towards our needs, what we really need. We have to develop varieties with faster pace, with more speed, and speed will come with the technologies which we have in hand. Whether we talk of marker-assisted selection, or GWAS, or genome editing, whatever you talk, these are the technologies which are available to all the breeders. Anybody can use these technologies to facilitate their, their breeding process. So, I won't take much time now, we are already late, so I will suggest that discuss a lot among your colleagues, bring out certain recommendations which are in executable form, it should not be general statements. Make sure that while making your uh, recommendation of your proceeding, those have to be very, very spe specific and targeted. And according to those recommendations, we have to make our action plan for next year and for subsequent years for which we are working. And I wish you all the best. You are doing a very good job and try to keep momentum high and my best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Thank you to ICR for providing the opportunity to host this national group meeting. Over the next two days, we are set to witness insightful discussions, share knowledge and forge new collaborations that undoubtedly propel our research and utilization of forest crops to greater heights. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to our chief guest, Dr. T. R. Sharma, DDG Crop Science, ICR, for gracing this occasion with your esteemed presence. Your inspiration and inspiring words have set the tone for this meet and highlighted the significance of our work in advancing agricultural research. A special thank to our Chairman Dr. A.C. Dube and Honorable Vice Chancellor BAU for your unwavering support and guidance in organizing this event. Your leadership is instrumental in driving the initiative forward. To our special guest, Dr. P. K. Singh, the Agriculture Commissioner of Government of India, and Dr. S. K. Pradhan, DDG Food and Fodder Crops ICR, we are incredibly grateful to your participation and valuable perspectives you have brought to this meet. Your expertise and insights are truly invaluable. 
I would also like to express our heartfelt thanks to our guest of honor, Dr. Pankaj Kaushal, Director IGL, ICR IGFR, uh, for your encouragement and for acknowledging the efforts of all researchers involved in this project. Your presence is the testament to the importance of our collective endeavors. Our appreciation extends to the project coordinator, Dr. Vikke Jadav, whose dedication and hard work have been pivotal in coordinating this extensive project. Your commitments ensures that we continue to make significant strides in our research and its application. To all the invited delegates and dignitaries, present and coming from different institutions. Thank you for joining and sharing your valuable insights, your collaborations and exchange of ideas, enrich our discussions and strengthen our collective efforts in advancing forest crop research. To all the participants who have traveled from various parts of the country, thank you for your active engagement.